new, 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 new. All right, first up, we have other sizes of the t-shirt. I don't collect NFTs unless you're talking about nice effing t-shirts. And here's Lady Ada in front of a real NFT gallery. We don't do NFTs, we get accused of it, we don't do it. It comes with a special pack of stickers and more. From the share zone. But there's now. Um, for friends. Yeah, there's now more sizes of the shirt. We have the women's small now. And once again, we don't do NFTs. Okay. Next up, we have a revision for the PCF 8523. It looked like this. Now it looks like this. It used to look like this. And now it looks like this. Basically, we can't get the SOIC version of the RTC. So you might get a version with the HV SON version. It's the same size. It's the same shape. It's the same pinout. It works the same but it might be just a little bit looking different, but that's because we want to keep stuff in stock and to do that, we have to be flexible with the parts available during the silicon shortage. Yeah, all right, another revision. Next up, P5000, which is the ESP32 S2 feather. Uh, this one is without the BME 280 sensor on top. Um, I released this, it was cool. I learned that I made a mistake with the low power circuitry. I have corrected the low power circuitry. The board is now re-released. Um, Functionality is the same, but uh, I now have an LDO on the Stemma QT port. I also turn off the um, pull-up resistors so that it doesn't have it like this current leakage thing. Basically, uh, I'm getting better at doing low power design and uh, this is a new revision that you can pick up. Um, if you do, make sure you're running the very latest um, Espressif, uh, sorry, the very latest CircuitPython release code and uh, check the Arduino code because we changed the polarity of the power pin um, to be from low on to high on. Uh, but we have a little snippet of code that no matter whether you have the B version or the C version, it'll work. So if your I squared C isn't working, just go check out the code snippet I've got, put that in there, and it'll activate um, the I squared C port, whether you have this version or the previous one. Next up. Uh, next up, we get these kind of cool, weird, like upside down yoga doing buttons. Uh, these are tactile switches. They're like the standard six by six millimeter. And like from the top, they look normal. But from the side, you're like, whoa, the pins are going the wrong direction. Um, they're pointing up. Uh, so these are reverse mount buttons. What are they good for? Well, I guess you would like mount them pick and place onto the back of a PCB. There's a little hole in the front of the PCB and the button knob goes through or the nub goes through and then you can press it without having like with a really flush front. Um, I just kind of found these fascinating and I think other people will probably have a use for them and maybe I'll have a use for them. But I always like reverse mount stuff because there's always times where you're like, ah, I need something on one side, but I don't want to pick and place it on that side. I want a flush front. Um, this will do the job for you. Next up. Next up, uh, we've stocked the Pi board, the MicroPython Pi board, which is the STM32F405 based uh, Pi board. Um, unfortunately, you can't get STM32F405s right now due to silicon shortage, which you've heard so much about. Uh, so we chatted with the MicroPython folks. They said, well, we do have the Pi B lights. Uh, these are STM32F11 uh, based boards. They're still quite fast. They're still very powerful. Um, it's pin compatible for the most part with the F405, uh, but it's just a slightly less powerful microcontroller and it's less expensive. Um, that said, if you want to support MicroPython and you want to get a Pi board, um, this will probably do the job for you and uh, we'll keep stocking it for a while and hopefully we'll eventually get the original Pi boards in stock as well. Just to rewind for a second, Todd has named these, I agree, these are the raised roof buttons. Yes. It just had to be said, okay. Party on. Uh, and we now have the socket plug, I don't know, the opposite polarity of uh, this Molex, Berg Molex connector that is often used for floppy disks um, and uh, floppy drives and for hard drives. Uh, we're doing a lot of floppy stuff and sometimes you have to kind of like power your floppy drive. Um, and I was like, oh, I wish I had the connector instead of like hooking my like little alligator clips on. Um, so this will plug into your CD-ROM drive, your hard drive, your laser disk drive, whatever. And you can provide it uh, five volts, 12 volts and ground. So it's not what plugs into the power supply. It's the thing that provides the power. Next up. Next up, uh, we have a handy uh, Raspberry Pi Pico breadboard from Monk Makes. Uh, Simon Monk makes some really useful stuff. So this is a breadboard, it's a solderless breadboard just like you expect, but it has a twist. On the sides, uh, it has the, in blue and black and red, it has the markings that are the pin numbers, like the pin names, for the GPIO of a Raspberry Pi Pico. So if you have this like $4 board, one thing that you might have found that's a little annoying is that the pin markings are on the bottom 
And if it's on a breadboard, you can't read them. Well, now when you plug them in, uh, you can see the pin markings right there. It makes it very easy to align your wiring. What a brilliant, brilliant um, invention. Yeah. Uh, definitely, I am chuffed. Okay. I think that's the right word. I think you can say that. I am chuffed. All right. Uh, at Star's show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our staff, our team, our community, our customers, and everybody watching is... This is a new STEM QT board. This is the TSC 2007. You can't get the STMPE 610 or 811 anymore. Got to find a replacement. And this is a really good I squared C uh, resistive touch controller board. Um, it's dead easy to use. There's like only like two registers. You send a command. The code for this is, is trivial. It's supported by Linux. I wrote an Arduino driver. I wrote a circuit Python and Python driver. Um, you don't need any ADCs, it just gives you the latest touch. There's an interrupt pin uh, that you can monitor that tells you when um, a touch has been pressed. Uh, there's also a little LED that'll light up. You can kind of barely see it down there, the red LED that'll light up. And there's just a demo showing on a resistive touch screen. It'll work with any four pin resistive touch screen. It gives you a number from uh, zero to uh, 4,095 because it's 12 bit. Um, readings of X and Y, and then it's your job to remap that to, you know, calibrate it and remap it to whatever X and Y coordinates you like. It's semi-QT, so it's plug and play. And we also, a lot of resistive uh, touch panels um, will just plug right into the connector we have at the top there. It's a standard one millimeter pitch FPC, and it's double-sided. Um, so, you know, whether you want to do it upright or, or the other way, it'll work if you have to like flip the X and Y. Okay, and did you want to show it off or anything? Or do you want to... Uh, yeah, I can or show a quick... Or is this video good enough? The video is good, but I still... Oh, no, this is stuck now. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah? Okay, wait. I can I can do a quick demo. Hold on. Go to the overhead. Yeah, I just did. Let me plug this in. Hopefully it'll work. Um, okay, so, yeah, I've got it plugged in. Uh, this is just a friction fit uh, one millimeter plug. Um, almost every resistive touchscreen we've ever seen uses this size and type of plug is kind of standard. And then uh, this is, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, it's got the X and Y. And again, it's 12 bit. It doesn't know the size of the screen. So it just gives you, you know, low 100s up to, you know, almost 4,000 um, in this corner. And uh, you can also see little red LED uh, blinking when, when it detects a touch. So you know, hi, being touched. Okay, great. Very easy to use though, I squared C, super trivial. Um, and again, works with Linux and works with Arduino, works with CircuitPython and more. New, 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 new,